Ocean circulation changes are now also altering life under the sea. A new study shows that there have been a lot of changes, changes that we haven't seen in the past 10,000 years. But how do you even measure the changes in the ocean? Well, this is what scientists did to figure out what's going on in the deep blue sea and how these changes are affecting its ecosystem. According to research published in the journal Geophysical Research Letters, scientists have discovered significant changes in the Atlantic Ocean's ecosystem that might have been caused by shifts in ocean circulation. In order to examine changes in the ecosystem, researchers used a plastic tube to take samples from sediments in the ocean floor. Scientists then studied the fossil plankton available in newer and older sediments. Results show that changes in the ocean's water circulation have caused a decline in cold water plankton and a rise in warm water species in southern Iceland, as the flow of warm water has overtaken cold waters. Scientists who participated in this study believe that these shifts have led to some fish species, such as mackerel, to travel northward. Results also showed that warm water is now reaching the Arctic. Scientists know that this could be aggravating the melting of sea ice there. The shift in the direction of the warm water currents could also affect key fisheries in the U.S. and Canada. So how does this affect us again? Well, if key fish species are traveling around different routes due to changing currents and rise in ocean temperatures, that means that fisheries also have to shift, and that in itself is a whole political conundrum. If you think we were exaggerating, listen to this. According to a 2002 study published in Oxford University's International Studies Quarterly, since the Second World War, a quarter of militarized conflicts between democracies have been over fisheries. Yep. Want to learn more about how our world is changing? Keep watching. Look at this thing. Just look at it. What in God's name is it? Well, first of all, it's more a they than an it. It is a siphonophore, known in some places as the long stringy stingy thingy because, I mean, again, look at it. This weird-looking string creature was found off the coasts of Australia along with many other new organisms that live in the deep sea. Here's how researchers bumped into the long, stringy, stingy thingy. According to a press release from the Schmidt Ocean Institute, researchers found a new submarine creature off the coast of Australia while aboard the Falkor research ship. The team completed 24,500-meter dives and totaled over 181 hours of deep-sea exploration using a remotely operated submarine called Sebastian. During this expedition, the marine specialists spotted a type of string-like sea creature called Siphonophore apolemia. Scientists estimated that its outer ring is roughly 46 meters long. Logan Mockbunting, a spokesperson for the Schmidt Ocean Institute, told Newsweek that although exact measurements are pending, its length could be over 119 meters long. Siphonophores are related to corals and jellyfish. They are an entity made up of a connected colony of cloned zooids that work as a team to keep the siphonophore alive. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, the siphonophore was not the only new ocean critter they found. We leave you with some breathtaking footage of the beauty and life that occurs in the depths of our oceans.
The vaccine race is on and Chinese researchers may have a head start after they claim they have successfully protected monkeys with a coronavirus vaccine. According to a study published recently in the preprint server BioRxiv, scientists at Sinovac Biotech, a private Beijing-based company, subjected eight rhesus macaque monkeys to two versions of his vaccine. Three weeks later, when the monkeys were exposed to the deadly pathogen, none developed a full-blown infection. In contrast, four control animals developed high levels of SARS-CoV-2 in several body parts and severe pneumonia. Despite the limitations of the trial, Sinovac senior director, Men Wei Ning told Science Magazine that the results give us a lot of confidence that the vaccine will work in humans. The monkeys given the largest dose of the vaccine had the best response, as researchers were unable to detect the virus in any of their pharynx or lungs. Monkeys that received a lower dose developed a minor infection in which they appear to have been able to control. Impressively, the researchers even claimed that the vaccine neutralized the strains of the virus isolated from patients in China, Italy, Switzerland, Spain and the United Kingdom. Acknowledging that monkeys with the virus don't actually develop the most severe symptoms seen in humans, the researchers said it's still too early to define the best animal model for studying SARS-CoV-2. Sinovac is no stranger to developing vaccines, having marketed vaccines for hand, foot and mouth disease, hepatitis A and B and the bird flu. Fingers crossed. A huge asteroid classified as potentially hazardous by NASA is barreling toward Earth at speeds of 31,320 kilometers per hour and will street past our planet on April 29th. Asteroid 52768, also known as 1998 OR2, is estimated by NASA to be between 1.8 to 4.1 kilometers wide. That's roughly the size of Midtown Manhattan. It takes asteroid 1998 OR2 three years and eight months to orbit our sun. Its journey takes it near Jupiter at its furthest point, but just outside Earth's farthest distance from the sun on its closest approach. According to NASA's Asteroid Watch, on April 29th, it will pass Earth at a distance that is more than 16 times the average distance between Earth and the Moon. NASA classifies a near-Earth object, either a comet or an asteroid, as a potentially hazardous object if its orbit brings it within 7.5 million kilometers of Earth's orbit, and it is greater than 140 meters in size. According to NASA Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, as of April 21st, some 22,582 near-Earth objects had been discovered. The latest data on the center's website shows that 9,085 of these were 140 meters or larger in size, and 902 were estimated to be larger than 1 kilometer. By comparison, the Chicxulub asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs is estimated to have been a whopping 18 to 81 kilometers in diameter. More on that asteroid later. NASA says that no human in the past 1,000 years is known to have been killed by a meteorite or the effects of a meteorite impacting. We had a close call in 2013, when the Chelyabinsk meteor came out of nowhere and exploded over Siberia and leveled more than 2,000 square kilometers of uninhabited forest. Shockwaves from that asteroid, which was only the size of a house, blew out windows and damaged buildings over a 500 square kilometer area and injured more than 1,600 people, according to NASA. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.